What's going on guys, it's me Wonder Productions, and I want to make another top 10 video, which I know I haven't done in a while, but I decided why not. So I'm going to be using the 769 start date in CK2, and I'm going to be talking about the 10 strongest starts at the 769 start date. Number 10, the Kingdom Maestra. The Kingdom Maestra is a very strong start, controlling a large portion of the Indian subcontinent, having a very large domain. The Kingdom of Maestra, though, has a weak leader, using only 2 Diplomacy and 5 Martial, meaning that their total army levy is low. They start off Hindu with the culture of Kannada, meaning that they can declare subjugation wars on many of the people around them, forcing them to give up either kingdoms or duchies. This allows them, once they reach 500 karma, to expand quickly. Though at first, with this weak ruler and not too strong of an heir, they will not have the greatest time expanding into India, and there are better options. They also have to worry about Tibet and the threat of China or the Abbasids. So keep that in mind if you want to play them. Number 9, the Kingdom of Lombardy. The Kingdom of Lombardy has a very strong start at 769 CK2, controlling the whole kingdom of the Lombards and a large portion of the Kingdom of Sicily. Though, they are not Italian culture and instead Lombard culture. They have strong neighbors including Middle Francia, the close by Umayyads, and the Byzantines. But with a ruler who is decent and an heir who you can make better, the Kingdom of Lombardy has a chance to spiral out and become even stronger. Though they have strong vassals who you should worry about, before declaring wars, as they may rebel against you and take over the kingdom for themselves. Number 8, the Kingdom of Africa. The Kingdom of Africa has a very strong start in CK2769, having a very large army levy and weak neighbors. The only strong person who borders them is the Abbasids, and the Abbasids have other problems to deal with around the world. Meaning that, due to this, Africa can quickly expand into Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia giving them significant powers. Not only that, but due to the invasions and holy wars they can declare, they can try to invade into Lombardy. They are not bordered by Middle Francia, Umayyads, or Lombardy, so you should not expect a war. And, due to their strength, they probably won't be invaded. Though their heir is not your kid, but instead your father. So you have to start having kids early on. And they are divided. Meaning that, if you can get the country in order early on, you should be very strong controlling most of Northern Africa. But if you can't do this, your country will fall apart quickly and you will fail. Number 7. The Kingdom of Middle Francia The Kingdom of Middle Francia, similar to Lombardy in Africa, has strong neighbors, but due to their chances to expand, this will not really matter to them. They are bordered by the Umayyads, Middle Francia, and Lombardy, with Africa and the Byzantines close by. The Kingdom of Middle Francia has the chance to inherit the Kingdom of West Francia if they kill their brother. Not only that, but they have a decent sized army levy and chances to expand into Bavaria, Lombardy, and even the Umayyads. They can make strong allies and use the Pope to their advantage. They are Frankish, meaning they are the main culture of their region, and they are also Catholic, giving them a good expansive bonus. Their heir is a child, meaning you can shape them whoever you want, but their king isn't very good. But of course, if you were able to kill off the king of West Francia, your country will be large enough that that won't really matter. Number 6, the Kingdom of Bengal, or the Kingdom of Pala. The Kingdom of Bengal has a very strong start at the beginning of the game, controlling two kingdoms, allowing them to expand and declare de jure wars on Bayar, and also declare jure wars on Bengal. Not only that, but due to their start as Buddhists, they can declare subjugation wars similar to other countries in India, meaning they can subjugate Sri Lanka or other nations which are Buddhist, though they have agnatic Galvakan succession. So since these two kingdoms they have can be split up, that means that on succession, if they have two sons, their country will be split in half and then they will have to fight a war to reunite it. But they have a very large army and good chances to expand and conquer the weakened countries who are split up in the south below them. Not only that, but after some time they can of course reform to primogeniture, and then they don't even have to worry about this gavel kind law. And they also control a large portion of the Bengal Empire. Though not all of it, it would be easy for them to conquer the rest of it and form the Bengal Empire. Number 5, the Kingdom of the Umayyads. The Kingdom of the Umayyads have a very strong start, controlling almost all of the Empire of Hispania and the Iberian Peninsula, and having two decently strong neighbors who can't really do much, that being West Francia and Middle Francia. Their third neighbor, Astorius, is weak and can be easily invaded and conquered. Not only that, but to the south of them, Morocco is split up, allowing for an expansion path. They start off Sunni, which means they can declare holy wars, and uh, they can also do invasions giving them significant strength and power. But the main problem with them is they have weakness due to the strongness of their vassals. 
meaning over time you may have revolts or invasions which may eventually even overthrow your whole country. But if you can keep that under check and expand, you should be fine. Number 4. The Kingdom of West Francia Similar to the Kingdom of Middle Francia, West Francia can try to inherit Middle Francia by killing off their nephew and then by killing their brother, inheriting Middle Francia. Not only that, but they have a strong claim at the start of the game on the Empire of Francia and the Kingdom of Middle Francia. You have two children who are both bastards, but you can legitimize them, and you have a very strong ruler who can produce a large amount of men. If you reform to the kingdom or the empire of West of Francia, you can conquer other regions and you can try expanding or getting vassals who are dukes, since they will respect your authority. Not only that, but you have strong expansion paths into Saxony and the rest of Germany and Poland. And you could also try to invade England. You have a very strong start and you can easily spiral and almost reform the whole Roman Empire. Number 3. The Empire of Tibet the Empire of Tibet was a recent addition to CK2, only being brought in in the most recent patch where they added all of Tibet and China and the Western Protector. Of course, that means that at 769, when the Empire of Tibet was around, they are very strong, having over 7,000 men and weak neighbors who they can expand into. They start off Buddhist and Bodhpa uh, culture. Their main problem is the Indians, if they unite, can do significant damage to them, and the Western Protector is strong. If you can bring China to heal or work in an agreement, then you have great expansion paths into Central Asia and India. But you have to worry about the Hindus uniting to try to fight back. Overall, Tibet is probably the third strongest country in the game, but they could vie for even the first strongest start, due to how you play them. This can allow you to basically conquer almost all of Asia quickly, if you play your cards right. Number 2. This was a hard one for me because I had to decide between the Byzantine Empire and the Abbasids. The two strongest countries at the start of 769 start date. Though the Byzantines have more troops than the Abbasids at the beginning of the game, I do not think they are the strongest. They are the second strongest though, with past expansion into the rest of the Byzantine Empire which they lost, and having strong control over their vassals and a great ruler. Their heir is also pretty decent in diplomacy but having weak martial, meaning you are able to control your vassals but not do much with your own domain. They have a decent amount of domain around their capital, but that's really it. Their dynasty is decent, having a lot of children from their one ruler, and they have many expansion paths. Their main rivals, of course, would be the Abbasids, Lombardy, and Bulk area. But if they can take these countries into heel, they can easily conquer almost all the world due to their spiraling capacity. You just have to be careful, as the Abbasids can do massive damage to them if they're not looking, and if you declare the wrong holy war against a Sunni nation, you may have to fight a long and grueling war, which you probably will lose. Now onto the strongest country in my opinion, the Abbasids. While the Abbasids do not start off with the largest army due to their ruler having low diplomacy and martial, if their heir or their heir below that, their grandson, have very strong martial or diplomacy, they can easily spiral out and become the strongest country. They have many tributary states which give them a large amount of money and men, and since their neighbors to the south and the east are still pretty weak, they can easily conquer them. If you are able to subdue the Byzantines, you basically have free reign over all of Europe, Asia, Middle East, and Africa, giving you significant strength. Your dynasty is doing decent, with your heirs having some amount of land. And, if you can work out all these kinks, you should be the strongest country in all the world. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while and have just been waiting on for some reason doing top 10s. Tell me what you think about my top 10s and if I should do more in the future. I'm sorry for speaking so fast, but for some reason whenever I'm recording a video I get kind of nervous. I'm going to be working on some other edited videos and a bunch of stuff, but I just want to throw out a top 10 and see what you guys think. I want to do more in CK2, EU4, VIC2, HOI4, and of course Stellaris. So tell me what type of top 10s you want to see in the future, what you thought of my video, and I know I was speaking a little fast, so be, feel free to tell me about that, and if you guys have any tips to calm down. So yeah, uh, this is my opinion. I know that some countries are stronger than others, and uh, some people may think that there's easier ways to conquer, but personally, I think that, of course, the Abbasids are the strongest country in the start date. But yeah, tell me what you think, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.